Well, you're all very welcome here to the sunshine in the fabulous surroundings of the Oval that I just say I'm joined now by one of the doyens of local uh, Irish League sport, indeed all sports, Stephen Bigham of the Belfast Telegraph. Vicky, it's hard to believe. It's as if the league is only finished and now here we are, we're starting again. It's incredible, Loki, it really is. And this season, I think, is a fascinating season. Cliftonville were brilliant last time around and, of course, deserved to win the title. But Linfield are going to come back at them big style. The Blues have made some sensational signings, I think, over the summer. And um, I think we're in for a brilliant season. Much better than last season, funny enough. I have to say, too, as well, whenever you take a look at the European adventure, even before we get to the Irish League, the local sides did so well. Augers well, as you say, for the incoming season. Well, wasn't it great to see Cliftonville packed um, whenever Celtic came to town? And um, the atmosphere that night was just phenomenal. And then Linfield, boy, did they turn it on. And how unlucky were they against the Greeks? Um, on another night, they'd, they'd have gone through, Logie, but um, it just wasn't to be. But it does show you that um, uh, Irish League football can stand tall when it comes up against these big European teams. And um, hopefully the quality will be there this season and domestically as well. Some people were very quick to ridicule the local game and they're going to Europe, you know. But I look at Crusaders, they even got a goal in their European adventure. You look at the Glens, they got a scoreless throw away from home. It shows that they, overall this league, despite what some of the critics might think, the league is actually of a quite a high standard. Yeah, it is a good standard. Um, it's easy to criticise. I've done it myself, you know, particularly whenever our teams have been in Europe and they've showed a lack of ambition and a lack of quality. But I do think that things are improving and you have to give a lot of credit to the managers around for that. Tommy um, Breslin, um, Eddie Patterson, David Jeffrey, these guys have all been around the corners and they, they know what needs um, to be done now in Europe and experience is, uh, works for a lot. And um, uh, I believe that Irish League football this season could maybe take a step forward as well. Now you talk about that they know what needs to be done on the European scene. Uh, here we go again being a wee bit critical too. Do the IFA know what they need to do when it comes to selling the local game? I feel there's not enough of the selling of the Irish League by the IFA. That might be very harsh but I still believe it. Well, the Irish FA, of course, have um, uh, rubbed their hands off the Irish League this season because um, it's not now under the auspices of the IFA. It's under the Northern Ireland Football League. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how that develops. Um, uh, sometimes I wish the I Irish FA, when they had the Irish League in their control, would have given it a lot more publicity, um, uh, would have given it a lot more oomph because they certainly do that for the Northern Ireland national team. But um, now it's up to the Northern Ireland Football League to show the way. And um, we can only hope that the powers that be deliver for local football, Logie. The odd news conference, uh, I always felt, just wasn't enough. I almost felt if it wasn't for the local uh, media and the local broadcasters, the Irish League would get very little publicity. Well, that's true. And sometimes the, the local media is criticised for not giving enough to the Irish League. But um, uh, without the local media, Irish League football would have nothing. And um, I think the fans deserve coverage in the newspapers, coverage on television. It's great that McLean's are doing this. It's fantastic to see. And, um, of course, they have backed Irish League football. And... Um, um, uh, maybe the powers that be should look at those um, uh, different elements and um, uh, think, well, if they can do all that, maybe we should be doing something too. Now, Piggy, you talk about the fact that Linfield have made some super signings. Cliftonville clearly were the champions last year. Where do you see the league uh, panning out? Is it between those two? Will the Glens here? Will they ever say? What about Crusaders? Is there an outside? Is there a dark horse? What about the new boys? I genuinely think the title race this season, Logie, is going to be a two-horse race. Cliftonville were brilliant last season, but it's one thing winning the league title and it's another thing retaining it. They are going to be the team that everybody wants to beat this season because they come to everyone's ground being champions. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they react to that and how they adapt to that because um, they are going to face teams who are just going to be given absolutely everything, 150%, not just 100%, to try and beat Cliftonville because they are the big name in town now. And Linfield perhaps can take advantage of that. All of a sudden, Linfield aren't champions. Um, and that's going to be strange for them, but it might just be welcome as well going into a new season. They've got a lot of good new players. They've signed Andy Waterworth, Sean Ward from Glen Torren, and those were two of the best players that Glen Torren had last season. I think Johnny Tuffy's going to be um, a vital signing for them as well. And then you look at the players um, who have been there and done it. Maybe they'll um, be reinvigorated. People like Michael Galt, people like Jamie Mulgrew, people like Peter Thompson, they'll be reinvigorated having not won the title last season to come back and show that um, they're not finished. So um, Cliftonville are going to have their work cut out and um, 
the Linfield Cliftonville um, tussle I think is going to be fascinating to watch. Are the rest of them, including the likes of the Glens here, they're going to be uh, also ran, so they're going to be playing for the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth places? I think if you give Glentoran third place right now, they would take it. You have to remember that Glentoran have lost a lot of quality. I've mentioned Waterworth, I've mentioned Ward, they've lost the experience of Colin Nixon, Stephen Carson has gone to Coleraine, so um, Eddie Patterson's going to have his work cut out. What Eddie Patterson did last season was nothing short of a miracle getting Glentoran to an Irish Cup final and actually beating the champions to win it in what was a fantastic performance. The man of the match for me that day was of course Waterworth and he's no longer there. So Eddie's going to have a really tough task. If Glentoran were to win the Irish Cup again and to um, finish third in the, in the league title race, I think that would be an unbelievable season for Glentoran. And Piggy, can I ask you, you know, Ballin and Mallard were a breath of fresh air last season. What about the new boys? What about Arge? You know, what about Warren Point? Can they make an impact like that as well, do you think, this season? It's going to be difficult for them. Um, Ballin and Mallard came in and they were a breath of fresh air. They played brilliant football. I think one of the big factors for Ballin and Mallard was that um, the other teams didn't really like travelling to Fernie Park. Um, for whatever reason, Logie, that once they get past the Ballygolly roundabout, the boys from Belfast don't really like it. Um, so, and it was great to see for Whitey Anderson and um, his team who um, put in great shifts wherever they went last season. And I think Ballin and Mallard this season, if they finish um, in the top eight, they'll be happy. You know, the finishing in the top six last season was incredible. Um, Bar Cliftonville, they were the story of the season. But um, top eight this season would be great. In terms of the new boys, um, Ards, I think they'll be okay in terms of um, saving themselves from relegation. Ards is a great football town. Um, it's a pity they don't play in Newton Ards at the moment. That's a real bugbear of mine and I would love to see Arts Football Club back in Newton Arts one day but um, I think they'll have enough about them to, to save themselves. Warren Point, oh, that is going to be a different story because um, uh, they could be like lambs to the slaughter unless they get a quick start to the season. They have to start well otherwise the pressure is going to be on and um, I'd love to see Warren Point do well because Barry Gray is a lovely guy and um, I know he'll play football the right way with that team but um, it's going to be a big ask for them and um, sad to say if you're asking me who's going to finish bottom right now I'd have to say Warren Point. So you'll be saying in the Telegraph and here with McLean that Warren Point is the one that's going to struggle. Uh, and listen to what you're telling me, it's almost as if you have a sneaking suspicion that maybe David Jeffrey and the Blues might bounce back and take the title. Well David Jeffrey is not a loser. Um, and um, uh, when you look at last season's record, Linfield just lost just about everything. Um, I would go as far to say, Logie, that it was the worst season I can remember from a Linfield team. They were abysmal. And um, David Jeffrey just won't stand for that. He's already brought in good players. Um, the players that are, were already there know that basically if they don't deliver this season, they'll be out in their ear. And um, I think what happened in Europe has given them confidence. So I would be tipping Linfield for the title. but. Cliftonville are going to run them close there's no question about that Tommy Breslin's built up a really good squad there and Cliftonville won't want to be known as one season wonders if you remember back in 1998 when Cliftonville won the title they sunk like a stone the next few years and um, this Cliftonville side that won't happen um, I'm sure about that they've got too many good players like Liam Boyce George McMullen who I have a lot of time for Barry Johnson you know and um, uh, I think Tommy Breslin's the sort of guy that um, will just keep on top of them the whole time. In terms of other teams to look out for, I think Portadown could have a decent season this, this time around. Um, I don't know why, but I've just a hunch that it might be Ronnie McFall's last season at the helm. I know that's um, a big statement to make because um, Portadown without Ronnie McFall is like um, uh, fish and chips without salt and vinegar. But Did Anne tell you this? No, that this um, might be that, Ronnie's last season. That is just a hunch. <laughs> that is just a pure hunch. I haven't been talking to Anne all summer. I've been letting her just enjoy the nice weather. So, um, I, but I just have a hunch. You know, Alex Ferguson has gone. And um, uh, if you remember, Ronnie McFall came in at, um, at Portadown at the same time as Alex Ferguson came in at Manchester United. And Ronnie might just be thinking, well, I stayed a year longer now, Fergie. <laughs> um, there should always be a place for Ronnie McFall at Portadown if he does step down, of course, because the guy's a legend. Um, but I think they'll finish top six. I think Coleraine will do their usual flatter to deceive. Um, uh, they'll do well maybe starting off the season and then fall away but again top six Glentoran top six as well and then um, the people who will probably finish bottom six are the likes of Glenavon and Dungannon but they'll go on good cup runs Ballymena United is another interesting one for me they um, won the County Antrim Shield last season and then once the players won that um, it was as if they downed tools as if they just stopped because um, of that glory night in the County Antrim Shield final so um, it's a big season for them they've got to show that um, they're capable of 
have um, content and again. But up at the top of the table, Linfield Cliftonville is going to be a fascinating battle. And it's brilliant for McLean's this, you know, because um, suddenly I've, I've, I've found a bit of a spark of interest in um, Irish League football. And that means people will be going into boogies. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of people going in. Um, Linfield Cliftonville play early season. And um, you could see that Saturday morning, quite a few people going into McLean's boogies to um, uh, wager a few pounds on the Blues or the Reds. Vicky, thank you very much indeed. A pleasure as always. And you, Luggy. Thank you.